What is up, everybody? Today, we're going to be going over arterial insufficiency ulcers. And so the thing I want you guys to know about this is this will show up on the exam. exam. Like it's going to show up on the exam, whether it's arterial insufficiency ulcers or venous insufficiency ulcers, or it's both nine times out of 10, they're going to be asking a question about ulcers. They're going to be asking something where we got to compare characteristics, make sure that we're okay. So as we're talking about arterial insufficiency ulcers, which that goes along with peripheral vascular disease, as I'll get into, under, or understand that this is like one of those things, like with, you know, diabetes will show up on the exam. Um, you know, hi hypertension will show up on the exam. This will show up on the exam. So pay attention. All right, guys, let's get into the anatomy. So I know my face is a little bit, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, you're seeing that my face is blocking a little bit of this uh, common iliac vein. So I apologize. But um, what we see with arteries is we've got to understand the anatomy, what's going on with arteries. So when we have our arteries, there's still a pulse. So in our veins, we pretty much lose the pulse by the time we get back to the vena cava and um, we're not really feeling any like, you know, Pulsi pulsatile feelings in our hands as we're palpating. But with arteries in a normal artery with normal blood flow, we should be able to, you know, palpate along like, you know, the dorsalis pedis, maybe in our popliteal artery, femoral artery, like we should be able to feel those pulses and all of those spots that we normally are testing. So when it comes to uh, arterial insufficiency ulcers, checking if there's any sort of, um, you know, blood flow, but probably checking at the dorsalis pedis, then, you know, along the posterior tibial artery behind the medial malleolus. And then we'd also be testing up towards the um, uh, popliteal artery. So we got to make sure we can feel pulses in our arteries. Uh, blood pressure is going to be higher in the arteries. Obviously, that's how we get the pulse. In our veins, the blood pressure is like almost zero. Like it, there's like basically nothing there, especially by the time we get almost to the right atrium. Um, understanding that the blood in arteries should be warm because, you know, it's just come from the heart. It's just been warmed up by everything in the skin as it's being flown down, like spread out and everything. The blood should be warm and therefore the skin around the area where we're palpating or we're examining, especially when it comes to our um, arterial insufficiency, but like along the lateral side of the, the foot and ankle, we're seeing that that skin should still be warm if there's nothing wrong with it. Now, remember an arterial ar insufficiency ulcer means something's wrong. The important thing to understand with a lot of these pathologies is what does it look like when it's right? And then we can figure out what's, what's going wrong. Our vessel walls of our arteries should be thick. They should be the lumen, which is the inside of the artery should be, you know, easily moving through, no problems, no resistance or anything. The resistance comes from plaque buildup and stuff. And remember our arteries do not have valves. So these are the important things to understand. And it will all make sense when we talk about the signs and symptoms of arterial insufficiency ulcers, because we'll notice, Ooh, something went wrong. Something totally went wrong. So what went wrong? Let's get into the etiology. So nine times out of 10, arterial insufficiency ulcers are caused by peripheral arterial disease. So I talked about this a good chunk when I was talking about peripheral vascular disease. If you haven't seen that video or heard that podcast or anything like that, go watch that. Very helpful to understand the whole etiology, because I'm not going to go through all that again in this. I really just want to talk about the ulcer itself because it's super important. Also, content warning, there's going to be ulcers on here and they are going to look pretty grungy and everything. So um, Facebook, don't take this down. So um, peripheral arterial disease is the main reason why. And so this is going to be happening. And then peripheral arterial disease, nine times out of 10 is happening because we have our atherosclerosis or arterial sclerosis, which is plaque buildup in the arteries. And so we're, we're going to see a lot, a lot, a lot of problems with that. So not fun not good at all. And so that could also cause an arterial embolism, which we're seeing over here in this picture. If you want to check this out on YouTube or Facebook, we can see this picture and we can see how the poor blood flow is not happening in this narrow artery and then it's completely blocked in this other artery. So basically when blood can't get to where it goes, that's where we're going to see the cooling tissue where we have like, you know, the cool skin to the touch where we're not feeling any distal pedal pulses. And we'll get into this in the characteristics. Like this is why, because there's no blood flowing. So understanding that that's what's happening. Um, and so when we have our atherosclerosis, arterial sclerosis, we're also going to see, you know, hypertension due to the narrowing of the arteries. Why does blood pressure go up? So I literally just did another video 
slash I think whatever you're listening to that was right before this if you're watching this in sequential order later the video before that is probably hypertension so this kind of flows into this so understand with the hypertension how I talked about when we talk put the, our finger over the hose and that makes the water squirt out faster that's what's happening here with our hypertension with the plaque building up in the arteries it's making it go faster but then it gets to a point where it's just trickling like a little stream because we've covered up so much of the uh, artery and the lumen with stuff. Obesity is going to lead to diabetes. Not usually, basically, these both are not going to be helping you with your arteries. Smoking, again, one of those leading causes of hypertension, diabetes, like all of this other stuff, like they all go hand in hand into making the arteries not work well. So kind of understanding that that's like the big three. And then you're going to start seeing all this epidermal damage as we get into when we're talking about the ulcer itself, um, because it's not just the arteries are messed up. It's that the arteries cannot disperse oxygen and blood flow. Because remember, arteries main thing is to get blood flow to the capillaries. If it's getting blocked, we can't have oxygen and nutrients diffused to the tissues. So that's why we start seeing the surrounding tissues, aka the skin, start to disintegrate and look like trash. So let's get into the what does it look like. So I would say this one on the top here is definitely way more indicative of what um, a arterial insufficiency ulcer ends up looking like. So you can't really see it too, too well on this picture, but this is going to be, well, you can, this is the outside of the uh, malleolus. I kind of zoomed in a lot on this because the guy's toes looked really grungy. Um, and then we can see this is also going to be along the lateral malleolus. I know it doesn't look like it, but this dude's foot's hella swollen on this lateral side. But um, so what we're going to see is arterial insufficiency ulcers like to hang out along the lateral side of the leg. And that's just kind of based on how the va vasculature of the leg kind of ends up going around. And so we're going to see that um, our venous insufficiency ulcers end up on the other side on the medial malleolus. So the lateral malleolus into like the heel onto the, you know, peroneals kind of area, even down into the great toe and foot kind of thing, those end up being like most of the common places where we're going to see all of these arterial insufficiency ulcers pop up. You're going to see with the ulcer that it has smooth edges. It kind of has that nice round kind of thing going on, similar to how our neuropathic ulcers look with the big circle, but it's on the malleolus kind of thing. So you can see with both of these, like they have these smooth edges nice circle. Our venous insufficiency ulcers have these really janky, like it literally looks like a little kid drew like Gumby or something like that. Like they're all over the place with the uh, irregular shaped edges. These are a little bit more circular and they look a little bit more prettier, I think, if we can call ulcers pretty. Um, so they also lack the granulation tissue on the inside. That's why they're going to have this weird pinkish looking um, like weird yellowish kind of shiny thing going on inside of it that's basically the best way to describe this honestly if you're not watching this as a youtube video check it out on youtube to look at the pictures um we're going to see that they have very minimal exudate and so this is because our um, arteries like you know how we talked about earlier if this picture like it gets blocked like with the clot basically blood flow is being blocked here so we're not going to see if there's no blood flow there's no fluid because you know blood is like what 90 like our plasma is like 99 percent water there's no fluid really getting here so we're going to see minimal to no exudate coming out of this and and uh, we're also going to see minimal bleeding, if any, or edema. And this is just because like nothing's getting to the area. So it's just as if we put like a tourniquet on them. So like, it's not like it can swell and get like a little bit like, I mean, like you see, it's like a little bump here, but it's really not going to have lots of exudate. Those severe amounts of exudates are more due to venous insufficiency because blood has already come up and around and blood's just getting stuck down there with arterial insufficiency ulcers. Understand blood is not even getting there with a venous. It gets there and it gets stuck. With arterial, it's not even getting to the destination of the foot. That's why we see, you know, it starts to become necrotic. Like in this picture down here, this is probably one that's been going on a little too long. And so that's kind of what it'll eventually progress to. Um, again, as I talked about before, remember our, our arteries are bringing nice warm blood to the area. If there's no warm blood being brought to the area, it's going to get cool and clammy and start to look like a little bit whitish in the surrounding area. This is, and the skin temperature will decrease and that's due to the lack of warm blood to the tissues. The surrounding tissue will start to get really shiny and everything. This is cause it's getting more pale and it kind of turns yellowish and then eventually turns this blackish color down here on this bottom picture. And the surrounding hair will start to thin out and fall off. 
And this is due to the lack of blood flow to the area. So remember our hair, you know, the bottom part of the hair all the way down into like the follicle of the hair, that's alive. That's still growing. What do things that are alive need? Oxygen and nutrients. What's not getting to the area? Oxygen and nutrients. The first thing the body's going to say is like, well, oh, crap, I don't need my hair anymore. It's just going to eat the hair follicles because there's no blood to the area. So not good at all. We're going to see that the, the pulses, if we're like palpating the dorsalis pedis or any of our other distal peripheral pulses in the foot and ankle, because that's more of where this ends up being a problem, we're going to see either a weak, thready pulse or absent pedal pulses. Those are like our two options. Those are like the, the most common things that the board's going to throw out. And it really just depends on the level of blockage, claudication that's going on in the leg. So remember that claudication is the pain with movement and activity in the lower legs due to arterial insufficiency and blockage. So that's due to peripheral arterial disease. This person is going to have severe pain, especially if we elevate the leg. Do not, I, I literally, if you're going to pick this answer of what's a good intervention for arterial insufficiency ulcers, and you're saying, oh, let's elevate the leg. I will literally come through your prometric screen and strangle you. You do not want to elevate the leg of somebody with arterial insufficiency. Let me say that again. Elevation of the leg of somebody with arterial insufficiency is going to cause them extreme pain. Essentially, remember how I talked about blood's not even getting to the area? So if you lift the leg up and blood's not getting there, now it's going to push against gravity. And so basically you're giving, you're basically making another tourniquet on their leg. So that's not going to feel good at all. Now, venous insufficiency ulcers, that's the one you elevate. Arterial, no. Arterial, no. No. Remember, in the middle of the let in, in the middle of the word elevation, there's a V for Venus. I know there's an A too, but the V is a bigger letter. That's how I remember it. So basically, lots of pain, gonna feel like a constant tourniquet on the leg. Do not elevate. Blood is stuck and it has nowhere to go. Bad. How do we treat it? Again, do not elevate the leg. Do not elevate the leg. I'm hoping like this will at least get through to somebody. Do not elevate the leg. And then you'll be in the middle of your test. And you're going to be like, Marie said, don't elevate the leg if they have arterial insufficiency. So I'm not going to pick that answer. Now, you can pick it if it says which one of these is not appropriate. But if it's saying which one's appropriate, you don't elevate the leg. We're going to monitor the pulses in the leg just to make sure that we're not making anything worse or causing any additional problems. Um, the patient is experiencing any sort of intermittent claudication. Remember, that's the pain in the legs with movement and exercise. We are not going to have them continue. We're going to have them pause and rest for a little bit until those symptoms go away and subside. We're going to monitor the patient's ankle brachial index. So remember, an ankle brachial index of 0 0.79 or less is indicative of mild arterial or mild, well, moderate arterial blockage. One to like 0.8 to one is mild. Anything less than 0.8 is basically going to be moderate. And so we'll see severe basically be like less than 0.4. Like it's just really bad. Uh, the closer to zero, the ankle brachial index gets the worse blockage there is. So I like to think of this as a percentage. So like, let's say we're going through traffic and only like 10%. So like 0.1, if we're having 0.1, only 10% of the traffic can get through like the like checkpoint. Then we're having really, like we're going to get really blocked up and we're having a lot of traffic. If one being 100% of the traffic gets through the checkpoint, then everything's flowing smoothly. So that's how I'd like to remember it. So the closer to one we get, the more normal we are. And like one is normal. I remember if we're going above one, one then you know, that's also a problem, but we want to get it right at one. Like one is ideal. And then the closer we get to zero, the worse we are. So that's kind of how I like to remember it. So percentages help me kind of understand what's going on. So the higher the percentages, you know, the better you did on the test, the closer you are to a hundred, woo, we want to get to a hundred. Um, the closer we are to zero, we're like, oh, I'm a failure. Not good. So that's how I remember it. So when we're treating this patient, we're going to want to examine the wound and be aware of any sort of wound care that might be happening outside of therapy for the patient. So definitely if they have a wound, we're going to be like, you know, as we're in therapy, documenting what the wound looks like, like measuring, taking pictures, putting like a quarter or a ruler next to it just for, you know, reference size. And we'll examine the amount of exudate, if there's any bleeding, what's going on, pulses, all that stuff. We're just going to make the wound care nurse's life easier and kind of CYA. So then if they're like, we need an amputation and be like, it wasn't our fault. It wasn't our fault. We documented, 
everything was fine. And if something doesn't look fine, that's when you need to get somebody. So be aware of what other uh, interdisciplinary care this person's going to be getting, especially with wound care. Key words, everybody. So this is the important page. Ankle, ankle, ankle wow. Ankle brachial index less than 0 0.79. Key, totally key. Wound is going to be located along the lateral malleolus or lateral parts of the leg or even into, you know, parts of the foot. But if we're talking about the malleoli, what's the more common one we're going to see? Lateral malleolus for arterial, medial for venous, lateral for arterial. There's, L, there's L's in lateral, there's L's in arterial. That's how I remember it. Um, atherosclerosis. So that's going to be the condition that's going to also contribute to a peripheral arterial disease. And so that's when we're going to see uh, this begin to develop because remember it's in the arteries with the plaque buildup and everything, the narrowing, the fatty buildup, the high cholesterol, all that fun stuff. That's not good for your leg. The wound bed is going to be pink with some smooth, smooth edges and like minimal hair. It's going to be, you know, getting shiny as well. Our peripheral pulses are weak or absent. Remember, they can be absent if there's a blockage. That's why it's arterial. There's no pulses. Not good. Generally, if there's no pulses, it's not good for the leg. It's not looking good for it. Um, and they can be weak due to the amounts of claudication that can be happening in the leg. Again, minimal exudate or bleeding. We're not going to see a lot of gunk coming out of this because no fluids and like I, didn't, I almost said air, nothing, no fluids and blood is getting into the area. And oh my gosh, guys, pain with what? Pain with what? Elevation. Pain with elevation for our people with arterial insufficiency ulcers. All right, guys, ready for the sample question? Should be easy after listening to me rant about this for what, 15 minutes. Sample question, guys. A physical therapist assistant is examining the wound of a patient with an arterial insufficiency ulcer. What characteristic would le would be least likely to be observed when examining this patient? One, wound is located along the medial malleolus. Two, pink wound bed with smooth borders. Three, little to no exudate. Or four, surrounding skin is shiny and hairless. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, guys, the answer is the wound is located along the medial malleolus. So this is asking what is what are we like like least likely to observe when examining this patient? So it's an arterial insufficiency, which means it's most likely going to be along the lateral malleolus. So not the medial, it's going to be along the lateral. It will have a pink wound bed with smooth borders. That's probably likely. Little to no exudate, also very likely when we're having an arterial insufficiency ulcer. And then four surrounding skin is shiny and hairless. Yep, all checks out because this one's asking least likely. So medial malleolus is probably on the lateral. So I hope that that was helpful in explaining about uh, arterial insufficiency ulcers. You got a little bit on the venous as well. Make sure you know the difference between the two because this will show up on the exam because for some reason the boards is like, let's ask a million questions about these two things. And anybody who's taken the exam before and has heard about this is going to be like, yep, I definitely remember that was a question because it's so easy to mix these up. So know this, especially for your other system section. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see y'all in the next one. Take care, everybody.